us a little bit about yourself before we get into the grafting. And we're standing in one in front of one of your beautiful maples here. So. Standing in front of a birdus. Mm -hmm. uh, actually, our very first variety that we collected. We uh, we met Harold Johnston close to 30 years ago now, and he is the master of Japanese maples. And he introduced us to the wide array of colors, sizes, shapes well over 500 varieties by now I'm sure um, and it's just so fascinating that you can take a piece off of a tree you want and put it on a seedling and make a whole new tree. It was like <laughs> magic! <laughs> so we, uh, my husband and I learned from the best who actually went to Auburn and taught a number of the people there, some of the ag agents I believe he taught Coach Dye too. Uh, how to graft, so our hobby. Our virtual class. When you want to start grafting Japanese maples, the first thing you need to do is collect your sign wood, S-C-I-O-N wood, I believe. Pieces from trees that you want to copy. And I get my Ziplocs and my handy Sharpie and collect a few pieces. This one. What you want is this year's growth and a few leaf nodes. Cut back like that. And make them get them damp. You're generally not doing it all at once. So you get it damp, throw it in your little baggie, and mark the variety so that you know what you're doing when you get uh, The other equipment you'll need is obviously a very good sharp knife. I like my little Uncle Henry pocket knife. Some people like to use just a razor blade because you don't have to keep sharpening it. Um, this is another grafting knife. It's very sharp, but it's awfully large for me to use. Um, some leather after you sharpen your knife it helps to smooth it out and really really put the fine edge on it with some leather uh, you need bags uh, two different size bags I prefer the longer one uh, because we're going to put that over top of the graft and wrap it with a little twist tie and after doing the actual graft we have these little rubber bands that actually just disintegrate after the graft is taken you don't have to worry about taking it off um, and then we can get started grafting so our first step is to clean up all the excess growth that we really just don't need on the seedling Japanese maple. Now I have picked, this is a little bit bigger of a maple because it has two good branches right here that I am going to graft like this so that you can get more faster growth, larger tree in less amount of time. So that's what we have to graft to. Then we're going to clean off our sign wood. Like you're doing cuttings, sticking cuttings, you can leave a little bit of the leaf. 
and now you're ready to graft. So for our actual grafting demonstration, um, for the upright or the dissectums that weep, you want to graft high on the tree and if you have two different branches you can graft both of them thereby filling out your tree a lot faster. So first we're going to cut into the seedling and then we're going to cut the sign wood with as smooth of a quick a cut as you can and then you're wanting to match your cambium layers on one side as close as you can possibly get and then take your little rubber band and wrap And I have two pieces prepared for this tree. I'm going to cut most of the leaves off, even a little bit, and come up here for a second graft. really like to cut it all in one fell swoop, but sometimes it just doesn't work. Put this as close to the side as you can, matching the cambium layers. And then your rubber band. And then you take these little bags, cut a little slit in it, put it over your sign wood, being careful to not move your graft. And now you have a little greenhouse over your graft. And that'll stay on until the graft takes two weeks, give or take. And as I said before, make sure you mark so you know what you just did. Now, for a low graft, for an upright tree, I'm going to graft down below. You clean up all of the, all the extraneous branches and things that might get in your way. Got a clean place to work and come in down here cut into that your cambium layer 
as close as you can get it on one side obviously they're different sizes so you can't line it up on both sides tie that off put your little bag on your tag and there you have your grass high dissectum weeping variety and a low upright variety